Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today, welcome to talk about LXL International AS and A levels, further pure mathematics too. In this lecture, we'll just review complex numbers. So the chapter three here is for the syllabus chapter three, but for the textbook, it includes both chapter three and chapter four. Okay, so what did we learn in this uh, chapter? So first, we talk about how to represent complex numbers. So before we learn about if we want to represent complex numbers, we can write it as z equals to a plus bi. So here, a and b are both real numbers, and we call a the real part of z, and b is an imaginary part. And then we talk about the modulus argument format of z. So this is r cosine theta plus i sine theta. So r is called the modulus of z. Or you can think about it's the distance between the point z to the uh, origin on the organ diagram. And theta is the argument of z. OK, and in this lecture, we've learned about the exponential form. So z equals to r and e i theta. So r is still the modulus of z, and theta is the argument. And we've talked about how can we convert between those three forms. So there is a very important uh, relation. We call it Euler relation. So we know e i theta equals to cosine theta and plus i sine theta. OK, so that's the first part of this chapter. And for the second part is we learned about different operations of complex numbers. So we've talked about how to do the multiplication, division, and also powers. So let's say if we have z1 times z2. So this is equivalent to the multiplication of their modulus, so r1 times r2. And the argument will be the argument of z1 plus the argument of z2. So here, theta1 equals to argument z1, theta2 equals to argument z2. And r1 is the modulus of z1, and r2 is the modulus of z2. So if we do z1 divide z2, so this new complex number will have modulus r1 over r2, and its argument will be theta1 minus theta2. And also, we talked about how do we do the um, power. So let's say if we have z equals to r e i theta, and z raised to the power of n equals to r raised to the power of n, and e, and its argument will be n theta. So here, n can be any integer. So this is also called the Moi theorem. How do you spell this, the Moi theorem? Okay, let's just assume we have this spelling. Moi. Let's just the Moi. Okay, so we are missing a B. So B R E. Okay, so that's how we do the three different operations of complex numbers. So how do we prove this the Moi theorem? So first we can use mathematical induction to prove this thing holds for all positive integers n. And also we can use that 1 over z equals to 1 over r times e negative i theta to prove this holds for all negative integers. OK, so we can have some applications of the Moi theorem. So the first type of application is for the trigonometric identity proof. So for example, if we want to prove sine uh, theta raised to the power of 5 equals to something, right? So we can use the Moi theorem. And usually, we will let z equals to r e i theta. And this will combine together with the binomial expansion. OK, so there are some very important formula. So if we have z equals to e i theta, so we know 1 over z equals to e negative i theta. So in this case, z plus 1 over z 
will be cosine theta plus i theta, i sine theta, and plus cosine negative theta plus i negative sine theta. But because sine theta and sine negative theta are negations, so the imaginary part is cancelled. So we have this one equals to 2 cosine theta. And similarly, we'll have z minus 1 over z equals to 2i sine theta. And if we have zn plus 1 over zn, so this one will be 2 times cosine n theta. And zn minus 1 over zn will be 2i times sine n theta. Okay, so this is the first type of applications for the Moore theorem. And the second type of applications is to find out the nth root of a complex number. So we try to solve the equation zn equals to w, and w is a given complex number. Let's say if this one equals to r, e, i, theta. Maybe we change a different letter. I think we'll go with u. Okay, so how do we solve this one? So we know z will be r raised to the power of 1 over n, and its argument will be i. So here we have theta plus 2k pi over n. So k equals to 0, 1, 2 until k minus 1. So in total, there are n distinct roots to this equation. So if we have u equals to 1, so we have zn equals to 1. So we can denote the roots as 1, w, w squared until w n minus 1. So one interesting fact is 1, w, w squared, w n minus 1, they are vertices of a regular n gong, and the n gong center is the origin. And also we know 1 plus w plus w squared until w n minus 1 equals to 0. So here, w equals to e raised to the power of 2k pi over n and i. Okay, so this is about the Moore theorem. And after that, we've talked about how to combine complex number and geometry, and to find out the loci, and also to find out the regions. So let's just look at the loci first. So if we have z1 minus z2, so we know this quantity rep uh, represents the distance between the two points, z1 and z2, on the organ diagram. So if z minus z1 equals to r, which is greater than 0, so the locus of this z is on the circle with center z1 and radius r. And if z minus z1 equals to z minus z2, with z1 and z2 being two distinct complex numbers, so z's locus is a perpendicular bisector of z1 and z2. So this means the distance from z to z1 and the distance to z, uh, from z to z2 are the same, perpendicular bisector. Okay, so if we have argument z minus z1 equals to theta. So here z1 is a given complex number, and theta is um, just a real number. So we will have a half line. So for example, if this is z1, so we draw a parallel line to the real axis, and we have this angle being theta. So the locus of z is just this half line except this point z1. Okay, and also we have if z minus z1 equals to k times z minus z2. Again, z1 and z2 are two given distinct complex numbers, and k is greater than 0, but it's not 1. So this one will be a circle. So in order to find the circle, we need to use algebraic method to do the calculation. So we just let z equals to x plus yi, and we'll find out is x something squared plus y plus something squared equals to a constant number. Okay, another type of locus will be argument of z minus z1 over z minus z2 equals to theta. So this will be the uh, arc. So from this z1 to z2 at clockwise. And z1, z2, these two ends will not be included in the locus of z. So if theta is between 0 and pi over 2, so if it's acute, so we know this uh, locus is a major arc. 
If theta is pi over 2, so the locus will be the semicircle. And if theta is less, uh, sorry, is greater than pi over 2, so the locus will be a major arc, uh, will be a minor arc. And in order to find out the locus, so we can use algebraic method or we can use geometric method. So for the algebraic method, we just let z equals to x plus yi, and we plug into this equation and find out um, the representation of tangent theta. And if we want to use geometric method, usually the, we draw the uh, segment between z1 and z2. And we know the center is on this perpendicular bisector of z1 and z2. And we will be able to find out the center and also the equation of the arc. Okay, so this is about the loci of points. And we've also talked about the regions represented by the complex number uh, inequalities. So the first type of region is related to circles. So if we have z minus z1 less than or equal to r, of course we can have less than, uh, greater than, greater than or equal to. So this is a circle with center z1 and radius is r. So if it's less than or equal to, so that includes all the um, like regions within the circle and also the boundary. If less than, so we just need to draw this boundary in the dotted line because this should not be included in the region. And if it's greater than, so it will be all the regions outside the circle. If greater than or equal to, it's similar to this, but we just need to draw the circle in the solid line because this boundary or every point on the circle should be included in the region. Okay, and also we have this R1 less than or equal to Z minus Z1 and less than or equal to R2. So this will be a ring. So we can think about Z1 is here and we have a circle with radius R1. And also we have another circle with center Z1 and radius R2. So the area specified by this equality should be this ring. Okay, so depending on if we can have equal or not equal sign, so we'll decide if the circle can be, should be drawn dotted or just as solid. Okay, so this is related to circle. Also, if we have z minus z1 less than z minus z2. So this will be half plan. So we can think about here is z1, here is z2. And then we draw the perpendicular bisector of this segment z1, z2. So this perpendicular bisector divides this uh, plane into two parts. So if it's nearer to z1, so it should be this part, right? So it's a half plane. So still, depending on here, can be equal or not equal. So we draw this perpendicular line as dotted or solid line. Okay, another type like similar to this will be the real part of z, let's say is less than or equal to a number. So we draw this line. For example, if a is positive, so it will be here. And the real part of z is less than or equal to a, so that includes all the region to the left of this line, x equals to a. It's still a half plane. And we can also have something related to the angle. Let's say if we have argument of z minus z1 is between theta1 and theta2. So first we find out z1 and we draw a parallel line to the uh, real axis of the argument diagram. So let's say this angle here is theta1 and this angle here is theta2. So uh, z will be this region. So between these two rays and this point z1 should be excluded from uh, the region of z. Okay, so this is about the loci and region of points. And finally, we learned about the transformation between two complex planes. So let's say if we have um, z equals to x plus yi. And then we can use a transformation t to map z to a point w equals to u plus I, uh, iv. So z is on the complex plane z, 
and W is on the W complex plane. So if Z is a circle after the transformation, we want to know the loci of this W. So some common examples is number one, W equals to Z plus A plus IB. So here A and B are real numbers. So this is a translation, and the translation vector is A, B. And also, if we have W equals to K times Z, again, K here is a real number. So this is an enlargement about the uh, origin, and the scale factor equals to K. And if we have W equals to I, Z, so this is a rotation about the origin, and it's ro uh, ro the rotation is anti-clockwise pi over 2 angle. And if we have W equals to Z squared, so if that's the case, we need to write Z into X plus IY and look at the relation between X and Y. And then we can translate into the relation between U and V of W. And same thing, if we have W equals to AZ plus B, CZ plus D. So here A, B, C, D are complex numbers. So we can write Z as X plus YI and W as U plus IV and find out the relation between the real part and the um, imaginary part of W. Okay, so actually we practice this uh, in the lecture. So that's everything about these complex numbers. We hope you have enjoyed our lectures and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.